Hi guys, it's Dave Farmer and welcome back to my series on Reaper. And today we just want to talk a little bit about left clicking, right clicking, scroll wheels, stuff like that. Uh, when I first started using Reaper from Pro Tools, it took a lot of getting used to to figure out what was going on with the left click because it behaves differently than it does in Pro Tools. Let me just show you a little example here. So I'm in Pro Tools right now. And what we're used to doing is having something like the selector tool and being able to select on this clip something like this and do command T to trim it. So if I try that in Reaper, I'm going to wind up moving this item. So you don't make selections with left click in Reaper on the media item. You make it anywhere, basically anywhere else, but not on the media item itself. You can start your selection here and end on the media item, but you can't start it on the media item itself. Now left clicking does do things like fades or, ba or boundary trims, things like that, but you don't make time selections on the clips. So let me show you how to do what I just did, which is to trim that clip in Pro Tools. I'll show you how to do that here. So I would make this time selection like this, then I would select the item which doesn't change the time selection. And I have a, um, an action that is, I put command K, which is an SWS extension if you watched my previous video, uh, trim selected items to selection or cursor crop. So if I now do command K, it will trim that just like it, just like it did in Pro Tools. Now, before I go too far talking about what left click does and doesn't do, you should be aware that Reaper has a very, very, very intense uh, set of options for things like mouse modifiers. You go to preferences, scroll down here to mouse modifiers, and you'll find that, you know, different items, media item, envelope points, envelope lanes, all these things, you can have left click with modifiers do all kinds of different things. What I'm showing you today is basically the way Reaper is set up by default. When you first boot it up and you try to use it the way you're used to using Pro Tools, it will trip you up just because it has different functionality right out of the box. One other thing that tripped me up a lot uh, when I first switched from Pro Tools is the way the transport works and selections. So let me just switch back to Pro Tools. I was used to doing this, which is being able to select a clip like this, hitting play, and having the playhead start from the beginning of that event. Now, Reaper doesn't do that. If I select this event here, the playhead basically moves to wherever I just clicked. So if I select this event here, it's not going to start from the beginning of the clip. It's going to start from wherever that playhead is. And you can see that when I'm just clicking and selecting this event, the playhead moves to wherever I click. Again, this behavior is probably changeable somewhere else, but by default, um, this is the way it works. So what I did was, I, I didn't want to really try to turn Reaper into Pro Tools. I wanted to experience Reaper with the features that it had to offer, but I did find that I got tired of keeping having to click my playhead somewhere else while I was editing. I did want to have that functionality return. So I did make an action and I assigned it to a different keystroke. I assigned it to shift spacebar and I made a custom action which does this. Item navigation, move cursor to start of items. That's basically whatever you have selected. It'll move the, the play cursor to the beginning of that and then it simply hits play. So now I've got that functionality by pressing shift spacebar. So I can select this media item hit shift spacebar, and it goes to the head the way I want. And I also maintained the regular spacebar to work the way Reaper does by default, just so I have that functionality, which is also cool. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about right-clicking. Basically, right-clicking, just like left-clicking, really, is dynamic. So whatever you happen to right-click on, you'll get a different set of menus. Like right now, I'm on this fade. If I right-click this fade, I can change the fade. If I right click the media item, I get a whole other set of menu possibilities. If I right click the track, same thing. If I right click in the blank space of the, of the mixer, get a whole other set of things. If I 
right click on a on a mixer track a whole new set of options so make sure you play around and right click everywhere and you can find out a lot of things about what reaper does so one of the tools you're going to want to use is the scroll wheel if you don't have a mouse or a trackball that has a scroll wheel and a right click button you're really going to need that for reaper because like we've just shown left click does one thing right click does a whole other set of things the scroll wheel does a whole other set of options, including zooming. When you first boot it up, you know, the scroll wheel zooms in and out just like this. And you can also set up modifier keys for scrolling vertically and stuff like that. I do have, well, I, I still have my Pro Tools equivalent R and T keys set to zoom in and out the way Pro Tools worked because that's the way I was working before. But honestly, I could probably disable those now because I only use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out these days. I hope that helps. See you next time.